Welcome to a special edition of The Social Corner. Here today with us, we got the UCLA legend, Jaime Hawkes Jr., who's got a social corner question for us. But before we get to that, we want to shout you out. Congratulations you, on, on, on being drafted 18 to the Miami Heat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Talk us, uh, talk us through that experience getting drafted. I how, mean, how'd it go? It was. I mean, as you guys know, it's it's surreal. Um, really, words can't describe it. It's it's accumulation of all a lifetime of work. Mm -hmm. um, just finally coming to fruition and paying off, and mm -hmm. you can finally say, "I did it. I did. I did what I was working for my entire life." And now I'm here, and now I got to set some new goals. But for now, man, I'm just I, I'm just blessed and proud to be in the position that I'm in and right. able to live out my dream. That's awesome. I over I got to overhear you earlier today talking about the experience when they brought your family to Miami and yeah. and you got a chance to go on a yacht. Yeah. <laughs> and now and now <laughs> hey, he was hyped. Yeah. But I love it. I yeah. love it. I mean, that's what it is as a kid coming into this this league and now like Bro, this is what you got to look forward to. This is what your future is like 100%, now. But 100%. he was like, bro, I got on a yacht. They ordering me this. They ordering me that. Now, like, my goal is I need to get a yacht. Ain't, right? no, sir, <laughs> ain't, ain't no service like the service on a yacht. Yeah. That's for sure. Definitely. That is for sure. So I ain't telling you to go buy a yacht, but you might want to go buy Have some a yacht. Friends. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. a fact. That's a fact. Hey, friends hey I tell them. you what, ain't nothing better than being rich than having rich friends. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> You get a chance to talk to anybody on the Heat yet? Yeah, I mean, I think the one UD or Udonis Haslam, man, I reached out to him, let him know he's the OG of Miami Heat. So I felt it was only right for me to reach out to him, let him know I'm excited did to be right. there. Yeah, he did part it right. Part of the organization, check, you know. Check in. That's yeah, check in. I'm, like, you know, I, right. I'm good, yeah. I got to check in with him. So, you know, hopefully we go grab some lunch when I get out to Miami. But like I said, man, I just couldn't be more happy, excited to, you know, felt, li live out my dream. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. How about uh, Pat Riley? You get a chance to talk with Pat? Or yeah, I got to meet Coach Coach Spo and, and Coach Pat Riley when I was there. And they came up, walked in. It was it was surreal, man. It's like these are the guys because it's like you know they drafted me, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard for me to like wrap my head around that. Like these are the guys that picked me. I'm just hoping to make them proud. And it was a very surreal experience, you mm -hmm. know, like growing up hearing about Pat Riley and then seeing Coach Eric Spoelstra and all the success that he's had, right. and to now finally like actually be a part of that. It's like, whoa, you know, right. it's like you got some big shoes to right, fill. So right. I'm, I'm excited, though. I can't wait. And you can't you couldn't have gone to a better organization exactly. that's going to get you prepared to play both ends. Like yeah, your your sure. game complements them so well. They complement you so well. Mm -hmm. So hell of a pick. Like yeah. they they Miami Heat won with that pick. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, they, they, they usually get it right. Right. Was that were they in, as intimidating as people make them sound together? I mean. You just hear horror stories about yeah. Pat Riley and Spo and how they do stuff. Um, well, I mean, when I worked when I worked out there, I was I was honestly pretty nervous about it because you know I wanted to make a good impression. But when I got there, everyone was it was in the, it was actually the next day they had a game in the finals against uh, the Denver Nuggets. But it was weird. Everyone was super cool, very like open, very friendly, just trying to make sure that uh, you, you were right and any anything you needed. And mm -hmm. the coaching staff, everyone that was helped that was there working us out mm -hmm. was just, you know, super supportive. Just, you know, let's like, we're here to have fun, compete. And we're trying to see what you guys are trying to do. So mm -hmm. it really, it really made it easy to just to go out there and no stress. You just kind of, you just go out there. We're trying to see what you guys do. Yeah. Was Miami one of your 21? Absolutely. They were. <laughs> 100%. Bro, they, yeah. so I, I worked out, I had 18 workouts uh -huh. and one of them was with Miami. And dog, I thought they was nuts. My workout, I had five defensive point guards. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Six two, six one, six three, six foot, like, and I'm six eight, and we playing one on one full court, and it got to the point where I had to Magic Johnson it, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dog, they nuts here, like, yeah. what, what am I doing here? But they, I, I had a great workout. It showed that I can handle the pressure at my size. You had a good workout. I mean, they drafted me, so I think so. Right? <laughs> you had to. Walk, I had right? to. Yeah. I mean. So it, it was one good. workout with them, or did you have to do a second one? No, I just I just did one workout with them. Okay. Um, I think I had a total of maybe like twelve workouts. Um, I mean, it's not as much as eighteen or you said twenty one. Yeah, I had twenty one. Uh, yeah, that's wild. Oh, wow. You was an NBA player already. <laughs> after that, I was like, man, that was a cool experience. I never want to go through it again. <laughs> yeah, right. Catching all those flights is, was horrendous, man. <laughs> 
That's what's up. Congrats, man. I hope you do great things. Uh, I know that you came here. You got a social corner for me. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I guess this could be for both of you guys, but everyone always talks about, you know, during this process coming to me, how it's important to have great vets. Even guys, friends that I have in the league always talk, you got to get good vets, got to get good vets. So I guess my question to you both is Mm -hmm. who are your vets and what was the biggest takeaway that or advice that they gave you that you took along with Mm -hmm. your career? I'll let let Draymond touch it first. Uh, I think for me, um, I always attribute my success to having great vets. I, whoever told you that, I think they couldn't have given you better advice. My vets were, and I, I was blessed to have several, which I was speaking about like us being so young and having guys. On. Jared Jack, I would say, was like my number one vet. Like, mm-hmm. took me under his wing as soon as I got to go to state. He was there for one year and like, you would have thought he was there for 10. Mm-hmm. Jared Jack, who I'm still extremely close with. David Lee, Carl Landry, like Andrew Bogut, like those guys were great for me. Richard Jefferson uh, was incredible. David West, who I had maybe like years five and six or something like that, was incredible. But when I say like my vets, like my two vets, if I had to pinpoint to is Jared Jack and Jermaine O'Neal. Mm-hmm. Jermaine O'Neal Big J-O. was incredible. I had J.O. my second year. And uh, just the things that him and Jack taught me, like they taught me how to be an NBA player. They taught me how to live. Like they taught me um, up until that point. Obviously, you know, I've learned a bunch more um, now, but up until that point, like the things that those two guys taught me uh, and just showing me how to be a professional. Mm -hmm. Like I got to say Jared Jack and Jermaine Mm O'Neal for sure. Yeah, for me, I came into the league, I was – I was a young guy and my locker room was surrounded by dudes that's played for seven, eight years. Mm-hmm. I came in with Mike Dunleavy. I came in with Jeff Foster, Danny Granger, Roy Hibbert, Dante Jones, TJ Ford, James Posey. I don't know if I said his name. James Posey. James Posey. Like, and then fast forward a couple years down the road, D West came over. Like, so I, I had great vets, but What I learned most was not everything that they said or not every vet has something that directly applied to me. Mm -hmm. But it was always something that I could take from them and they were willing to teach. And so I think, you know, as you go on, just be a sponge. Mm -hmm. And again, every person will have something different for you. And like the way Danny Granger prepared, not necessarily how I would prepare for a game, but just his approach when he was out there. D West, we had a different game, but his professionalism every time he touched the court, like everybody just has something different that I could tap into. Mm -hmm. And it was just easy. Like I was a sponge, whatever they said, like some shit stuck, some shit went throughout the year, one year, not the other. But you know, I think it is great to just dive into like, dive into people that you necessarily won't even think is your kind of person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's value in that. So just be a sponge, bro. Definitely. You probably don't even know who Jeff Foster is, do you? That's a little past my time. (laughs) (laughs) Don't lie. But I learned a lot from Jeff, bro. Like, he didn't play much because of injuries. He had a bad back. But he came to work every day Mm -hmm. and was happy about it. Like, he was pushing 38, 37, like old vet. Mm -hmm. Barely could play. Like, some days he called in, I can't get out the bed. Like, but when it when it was time to put in work, like he was there to work every day. Mm-hmm. And so I appreciated him for that. Like and so it was like, all right, if I'm hurt, something ailing on me, like, I'm gonna get through it. Like Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You gotta work. If he can do it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I guess so my other question would be you guys obviously were talking about, you know, business and the podcast and like what you do to take your mind off basketball. So I guess my question would be you know, after basketball and after business and what do you guys do to like really just take your mind off and just settle down and, you know, just, you know, be yourself? I think for me, um, it's having a great friend group, Mm -hmm. uh, friends that, you know, like don't let nobody tell you all your friends got to be basketball players. Like Mm -hmm. that's so cliche and unrealistic. Like you think there's 450 guys in the NBA. Can't be friends with all of them. Come on. Right. Not, not <laughs> exactly. only can you not be friends with all of them, but let's be realistic. Like, 
That is 450 people in the grand scheme of the world. What is the likelihood that you're 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 actually just friends with those 450 people, mm-hmm. or like some like yeah. no, like have your group of friends. Mm-hmm. Like I have plenty of friends that's just not in the NBA, don't mm-hmm. work in the NBA, and honestly, like that's a release. You know what I'm saying? And you get to do other things. You get to live a normal life. You know, like their life at times that would possibly be your life, but isn't because you're playing in the NBA and it requires different things. Mm -hmm. But like, enjoy your friends and like have a great friend group and know that like ultimately those friends want well for you. Mm -hmm. And then I think for me, most importantly is I spend a lot of time with my family and my my wife and my kids. Uh, My kids in particular, they, um, they not only do they keep me young, I feel like I'm fairly young. I'm 33. I'm not some old man, but like <laughs> they they keep me running around and chasing them, and they also give me a perspective and a purpose. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, uh, like just the perspective, like man, these like you play a million games and you want to win, but you also understand that it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know, and like life is going to go on, and like there are more important things going on in life or on a daily basis than if you won or lost a game. And like my kids will always remind me of that because you know, you walk in the house and like they're all over me. Like I just hit the game winner in game mm-hmm. seven of the NBA finals and we just lost by 40. Mm-hmm. But like that, that to them meant nothing, you know? Or like on the flip side, I have a great game and we win and we beat somebody by 40. And like you walk in the house and like, like, where you been at? Yeah, it's like actually, I just won a game and kill kill these people, and like that's that don't matter to them, mm-hmm. you know. And so I think just having that perspective and purpose from my family is is huge for me. Yeah, yeah. we ain't we ain't saying go out there and just <laughs> yeah. have kids right away. Absolutely <laughs> but, not. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. Not I need yet. some advice but, on that yeah. too. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. But uh, no, I think you need I think you need multiple outlets. Mm-hmm. You need multiple escapes. Cause truth of the matter is like, don't let basketball just be become your life and that's just who you are. Mm-hmm. Like you you need other escape. I love that young guys are tapping into fashion. They're mm-hmm. tapping into the gaming world. They're tapping into the music world. Mm-hmm. Like you can't play basketball 24 hours out of the day. We yeah. talked about that early. Like, yeah. so you need escapes. And when it comes to the social media shit, like don't buy into that shit. What gave me, what gave me comfort and I and, and I had a I had a moment where it did get to me, mm-hmm. but then I start to realize like everyone that's talking this <laughs> shit can't do what I do. Exactly, you know what I mean. Exactly, they're gonna miss the same shot I miss. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Badly, badly, <laughs> like not even a chance. Yeah, and so like you can't feed into the social media shit. Like don't don't put too much attention there. Use it for what it's good at mm-hmm. with marketing, promoting yourself, building your brand, all the other shit. Like let that shit mm-hmm. just sweep that under the rug. But if, if I would give an advice on, on you know, your early years uh, in the league, like just don't put too much pressure. You played basketball your whole life, bro. Mm-hmm. Don't put too much added pressure on it. Like Definitely. do what you gotta do. You know what, what, what hard work did for you. Mm-hmm. Let that be your foundation and enjoy what your hard work has done for you mm-hmm. after basketball. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't put too much into it. Definitely, definitely. You know that the clip did go viral. Yeah. Uh, the moment we had, and uh, you know, I, it, it sucked for you being on the side <laughs> yeah. of, of. But but they gave you a highlight. They did. You know, of, they of you me hit me with some shit too. Um, but it was fun. I think oh, even at that moment, you know, I, I took you to the side and yeah. I was like, hey, like, yeah, this is what gave me that space. Yeah, getting that shoulder into you. You know, playing off my shoulders. That's yeah. what made me. You know, I've learned that trick throughout my my time of playing. Mm-hmm. But you know that 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 was fun. It, in that moment, you playing because you've been at UCLA for a while, so oh, you've wow. seen a ton of the runs. You've been a part of a ton of the runs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I want to ask from my perspective, like who was somebody there 
that gave you good advice and like somebody like, oh, OK, I'm going to get better going into next season because of this run and this pickup against him? I mean, a, a lot of guys. I mean, there place, there's so many great players that go through them runs. I mean, I think Rico, the way he does it is, is just tremendous. And the way he allowed me to be there at such a young age, mm -hmm. um, I remember going there as like a going into my senior year of high school. He let me come and watch and even sometimes play. But I just remember being there and seeing Corey Brewer. He was one of the first guys to go there. I mean, he's not he's not the biggest NBA guy in the world, but I just remember I knew who he was and I was watching him play and I was like, damn these motherfuckers are really good. Right. Like, right. like even a guy that isn't, you know, the, the top of the top all-star is like just really busting everyone's right. ass. And it really just gave me perspective. Like, damn, I got to get better. Like, right. you know, <laughs> shut up. And C so, Pooh. yeah. So he just, and I don't know, he probably don't know, but I just remember watching him and he was just cooking everyone. I was like, wow, I, I really got to, like, this is really what I want to do. I got to, I got to continue to get better and work and work and work. And so, you know, being able to go there and even like bringing, bringing a squad and then trying to guard you. I mean, every guy that was on the team, I'm trying to guard the best guy. So that's why I was like, had to take the challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I tried to reach a, cut a little bit, probably shouldn't have done that. And, you know, you learn your lesson. You <laughs> yeah. learn your lesson. So no, I love that. I love that because yeah. it was a couple guys, a couple of younger guys there too that was like, oh, like I, I, I'll match up with Paul. Yeah. He like, nah, I got him. Yeah. You go guard over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I love it because that's how I approach it. I want to guard the best person, regardless if it's going to be a long night or not. Like, yeah. I, that's how I value myself. Mm -hmm. Like my value is I'm going to try to make it tough on the best player. For sure. For and sure. in return, like I'm going to try to bust the best player's ass as exactly. well. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I value that. And I appreciated that moment. Me that too, man. Me too. I appreciate it. Don't lose that. Right. Oh, yeah, like when never. you get to the league, you go in the game, go guard the best player. Yeah. Right. It'll get you on the floor. 100%. 100%. Quick. That's a wrap. We got Draymond Green. We had Hami Hakez Jr. He came through for the social corner of the week. Appreciate y'all once again. Yes, sir. It's love, and we out. Look, the NBA season is done, but that doesn't mean prize picks is. Guess what sport I'm making money on now? Ah, baseball, baby. Look, I'm up big thanks to Mookie Betts and Mike Trout, who are helping me cash in this season. But – I got to let people know what Prize Picks is. I got to do that. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players like the video on your screen, then pick if they will have more or less than their Prize Picks projections. You aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Look, I know how much I won, but let me tell the people how much they can win. Look, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first-time users that deposit and use our promo code PODCASTP will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That means if you deposit $20, Prize Picks will give you $20. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. And like I always say, Dallas, what we say? Yeah. He ain't here. Cha-ching!